morning everybody, it's Rob Muffet. We're going to be cooking up some stuff from our food storage this morning, mostly in our pressure cooker. Um, this is something we're going to be baking in the toaster oven out on the balcony. It's a uh, shibati bread. This flour we uh, let sit overnight. It's going to go 18 hours ferment and uh, you can see how well it's risen. It's only two and a half cups of flour. We're going to be cooking up some wheat berries that were soaking overnight. We're going to cook up some black beans in the pressure cooker that we soaked overnight. And we're going to flavor them with some dried onions. And also we're going to be making up a little sardine sandwich bread. And this is just something to keep occupied during the calamity here and uh, enjoying myself. And I'll let you know how it goes. Uh, I'll start my day off with a little bit of cranberry juice I made from dried cranberries. This isn't very good quality cranberries. Um, there's not much juice in them considering I had to pressure cook them. But uh, yeah, you can make your own cranberry juice from dried cranberries in food storage. Hmm. Alright, we're going to rinse Mr. Black Beans. Okay, we're going to top off the old black beans to pressure cooker. Add a couple glugs of old uh, Italian dressing. Because we soaked the black beans overnight, we're only going to have to pressure cook these for about 10 minutes. Once it starts steaming or whistling, um, we can just turn it down to low heat. Between low and medium. The water level is kind of high, so it's probably going to spit out all over the top of the pressure cooker, but that's okay. As soon as it does, we're going to turn off or turn down the heat and let it cook for 10 minutes. Ready to blow. There you go. <laughs> Alright. Put her on between low and medium and set it for 10 minutes and you're good to go. However, we did forget to add the dried onions. Now that's a calamity. <laughs> oh, no onions, come on. As soon as the beans are done, we're gonna rinse out these dried wheat berries and cook them for 10 minutes the same way. We'll probably add about two cups of water. This was originally one cup of grain and it's been sitting overnight. No spices added to it, just gonna cook it straight because I don't know if I'm just gonna eat these for uh, like, uh, just a side dish or make something else. So if you add spices to it, you won't be able to use it in a lot of different things. And then we'll be making our sardine spread. And this bread that's sitting here, this dough, it's gonna go in after 18 hours. It was started last night at nine o'clock. So it'll be, be uh, ready to bake at three o'clock. And I'll show you how that goes too. After 10 minutes up, just let it cool off on the stove. If you have a gas stove, you're going to have to cook it for a longer time because this is still cooking even though the heat's turned off. Oh, there she goes. Nice pot of beans. This bean broth, even though we only seasoned it with a little bit of Italian dressing, is delicious. The beans are flavorful and they're nice and soft but not too soft. And just a perfect little batch of black beans. Easy peasy. Okay, here's the wheat berries. They've got a nice kind of crunchy, uh, nutty taste to them. You can use them in cereal or uh, in baking different things. Uh, or just plain with some butter as a side dish. But they have a lot of fiber, so if your system isn't used to a lot of fiber, you want to go easy on them until you're adjusted. Hey everybody, this is Rob Movit. This is our bread, our no-need bread, our ciabatta bread. We're going to be baking in this pan that is going to fit our <laughs> toaster oven. I bent the ends and squeezed it in a bit. It's going to work fine. And this is our bread dough we've been letting sit for 18 hours. It's two and a half cups of flour, a quarter teaspoon of yeast, one teaspoon of salt, and one and a quarter cups of water. And it's been sitting here for 18 hours. Now we're going to put it in our pan 
and then let it sit in the pan for a couple hours and rise again. Then we're going to put it in our toaster oven and bake for about 35 to 40 minutes at 450 degrees. Right now we're kind of punching this down. Today's kind of exciting. It's March 30th. Here in South Florida, the governor just said everybody in South Florida is supposed to shelter in place. So <laughs> if this bread comes out good, we'll have chia body bread in our shelter. <laughs> if not, it's cornbread again. And by the way, this is today's batch of molasses apple cornbread. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Some people put cornmeal in their pan, but why waste good cornmeal? Now we want to spread this out. Some people put their dough on a sheet of plastic wrap and then transfer it over, but I'm just going to try it this way. Reminds me of the Stay Puft monster from the movie with Bill Murray, Ghostbusters. <laughs> this is how it starts. Now we're going to let this sit for two hours. Pop in the oven. This is going to give us our chia body. Or not. <laughs> we'll try this again. This might be the time you could add sesame seeds or other flavors. I wish I had put onions in this. Some fresh chopped onions, Vidalia. Make a little onion bread. Alrighty. Good to go. Come back in a couple hours and pop that in the oven. In the toaster oven. <laughs> 